my booktube! Lynette here and today's video is going to be the books that I plan to read in the month of June. So for June I have joined the Whateverathon Readathon run by Maddie over at Book Browsing Blog. I will leave her linked down below. I'll also leave the announcement video linked down below as well um, because this is a readathon that is running throughout the month of June. You don't have to have signed up at the start. Um, you can sign up part way through the month so I'll leave all of that link down below so you can go and check it out properly yourself. Uh, basically Maddie, um, it's called Whatever You Want a Thorn because there is no theme to the reading. Um, there is some structure to it if you want to go with structure but the basics are you pick a team, uh, she has four teams, you pick a team you sign up um, to say that you're going to be on that team. You say how many books you think you're going to read in the month of June. And you then um, just have to, as the month goes on, submit the books as you read them. The books will gain points for the team that you're on. At the end of the month, Maddie will tot it all up and tell you which team won. So there is a little bit of competitiveness there for you. Uh, she's got a whole point scoring system for it and yeah it's just good fun now the structure does come in that she has set up prompts for you to follow if you want you don't have to if you don't want to hence the name whatever a thumb i have decided i'm gonna have a go at following the prompts i'm not really good at these sorts of things um so i like the fact that it doesn't matter whether i follow them or not um but if i do then i will get some additional points I have decided to join the Sunset Scholars team and I'm going to put a, a little um, graphic here of our bingo board which shows all the prompts. Uh, now the prompts that are on this board that are shown in white are prompts that are common across all the teams. So all four teams um, have the, these prompts. The prompts that are in orange on this board are unique to the Sunset Scholars only. And the other three teams, which are TBR Travellers, um, Beach Readers and uh, Shelf Slayers, they all have their own five prompts, their own colour as well, that are unique to them. The grey uh, squares on this board, they are non-reading prompts. Um, so yes you have to join in sprints you obviously read during during those sprints um but there's the achieve a personal goal that now that doesn't have to be anything uh to do with reading at all so for me um i'm going to try and listen to a little bit of my audiobooks as i try and make a bit of progress in decorating my hallway um so while i won't have achieved a personal goal i will have made some progress towards that goal uh Maddie's only main rule with this readathon is don't be a dick. So if I only peel like a tiny little piece of wallpaper off the wall and do nothing else, I can't count it. Um, so yeah, so there are all these different prompts, as you can see on the board, and I am going to try and follow some of these. Some of the books that I've chosen for this month do fit into those prompts. Some of them might get shuffled around a bit um, as I read other books. Um, I'm going to try to uh, use maybe two of the white and orange prompts per book rather than three. You can have up to three. Um, but just so that I can have some movement around just in case I read a book that maybe fits a prompt better, um, then I can shuffle it around a little bit. Um, the 48 hour readathon, obviously, if you're joining the if you're seeing this and joining up after she's had the readathon, which is meant to be running from the 11th to the 12th of June, uh, Maddie has said if you have your own little readathon going, or you know maybe set your own little challenge, maybe do you know 12 in 24 or something like that. Uh, Maddie said absolutely that will count. So yeah, so this is a good fun, um, pressure but no pressure readathon that just about everybody can take part in because. It doesn't matter whether you read fiction, non-fiction, fantasy, romance, whatever, um, then this readathon is for everybody. So let's talk about the books that I plan on reading now that I've waffled on about the readathon. 
Now, pretty much all of these are physical books. I haven't actually looked at my e-books um, to try and find any books. However, I might. I might, depending on how I get through the bingo board, depending on how I get through the month, how I'm feeling. Um, but yes, I am using this as an excuse to reduce down my TBR, um, my physical TBR as well. Because um, I find that easier to, to look at for prompts than I do um, ebooks. But the first book that I've picked uh, is Circe by Madeline Miller. Now, this fits quite a few of the prompts on the um, board. It fits shiny cover. It fits one more title. Um, it's the only it, it's the only book that I can make fit the last letter, first letter challenge. Um, although this one won't count for that. The following book would count for that. Um, but yes, yeah, so, and I think this one, um, I actually did a poll. And again, I'll just put a little clip up here so you can see. I asked on the Discord channel for the readathon, which book should I read first? I gave them four choices. And as you can see, Circe won. So, Circe is definitely shiny cover, one word title, and um, definitely for a uh, um, poll. Circe is about uh, the daughter of Helios Circe, who it's discovered that she is a witch and she has powers. I have actually started reading it. I'm about a quarter of the way through. I am enjoying it. Um, but she is banished uh, when her gift um, becomes a threat to the Olympian gods. And there she hones her skill. Um, and she also meets Odysseus. So... That's all I know about it. It's Greek myth retelling. Um, I, if you've been watching my channel over the last um, six, seven months or so, you'll know that I have started getting into the Greek myths. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying this dip into the world. I really enjoyed The Song of Achilles, which was uh, Madeline Miller's first book. Um, and the writing in this is just perfection, um, or at least so far it's just perfection. Um, and I'm really glad that I picked it up and yeah, I'm definitely getting on with this um, and I'm looking forward to finishing it hopefully in the next couple of days. Second book, and this is the only other book that is absolutely 100% set in stone that I have to read in a certain order, is Evernight by Ross McKenzie. Um, again, this could be picked for shiny cover if I don't use that for Cersei. Um, it's also a one word title. Um, it also starts with an E, so that's why it has to follow Circe, because Circe ends with an E. So this is definitely the pick for the uh, last letter, first letter prompt. Um, and yeah, this is a middle grade novel that I picked up a couple of years ago when I was on a reading retreat. And um, it's about a young orphan, Larabelle Fox, who is a treasure hunter in the sewers of the city where she lives. However, she finds a box which then throws her into the world of magic and yeah, dangers around every corner and it sounds like a good, fun, um, middle grade ride. So I'm looking forward to picking this one up. Um, like I say, I've had it for a couple of years now. Uh, I was really intrigued by it when I picked it up to start with. So definitely um, going to uh, look forward to picking this one up. And the next book that I'm going to pick, I'm going to hold up the physical copy just to show you so that I've got something in my hand, but I'm actually listening to the audiobook, and that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. As pretty much most fantasy readers know, this is about Bilbo Baggins, who goes off on an adventure with some dwarves to steal back treasure from a dragon. Um, I am going to be listening to this uh, on audio so that it covers the different formats. Um, because I don't listen to audio, even though I'm trying to listen to more audio this year. Um, I don't often listen to audio and it's not my first choice for picking up books. Um, it also fits the prompt for favourite genre, um, because fantasy is absolutely one of my favourite genres. Um, and I was introduced to fantasy because of The Hobbit. So yeah, definitely an absolute fit for that. And I may also use it um, for the uh i've forgotten what it was um it's on it was on a previous tbr that's it it's definitely going to be used for on a previous tbr because if you've seen my tbrs over the last few months this was on my tbr i think back in march 
which is when I originally started listening to the audiobook. Now, yes, I have already listened to some of the audiobook, but I had more than 50% left of it. Maddie has said that if you have any carryovers uh, from a previous month, as long as there is le more than 50% less, it can count. If it has more than less than 50% less to read, then don't be a dick and don't uh, count it. Um, so definitely this one is going to count and it definitely ticks off two, if not three, more prompts. And the next book that I am hoping to read this month is Dragon City by Kevin and Katie Sang. This is the third book in the Dragon Realm series. Um, and yeah, I've got, um, I might be changing uh, which ones this actually covers. I was originally going to go for dragons. I was going to go for under 300 pages and I was going to use it um, for uh what was it continuous series um i'm not sure i'm definitely gonna knock this off because i ran a poll another poll to decide the color of the book color of the cover um and green was the winner so i think i'm gonna have to count this for green as the winner which is why i'm saying i need to juggle things around a little bit because i think i might use it for dragons i think i might use it for color on the cover and I think I will either, I'm either going to drop continuous series or under 300 pages. Um, because I'm sure I can probably find something else under 300 pages. Um, I think I might have one other book that might fit that. Um, but yes, I, I need to have a look and see and decide at the time that I read it. Anyway, this is following on from where the second book left off. Can't really tell you anything about it um, other than... They're in Dragon City and yes, um, they need to get the pearls back so that they can um, deal with the Dragon of Death um, and restore the world to how it should actually be. Uh, again, I've had this since last year. Um, so again, I think it would count for a 2021 release. Um, and yeah, looking forward to picking this one up and continuing the Dragon, Dragon Realm series. Uh, I also have book four which is why I'm thinking I could possibly drop dragons. I might be able to drop dragons um, because I've got book four, so I can always carry on um, with that one. So yes, we'll just see how we go. Um, and you'll find out at the end of the month when I do my wrap up. And the next book that I'm hoping to read is The Dreamweavers by Barbara Erskine. Uh, this is a book that I bought recently um, and I actually did a haul on this channel for it. So it will cover the recently hauled. Um, prompt on the bingo board it's also historical fiction historical fiction is not a genre I reach for very often at all so it covers the least read genre prompt and it was also a book that was released last year so again it covers 2021 release so I have a couple of options there um, this is about the Saxon king daughter Edba uh, who is destined for an arranged marriage um, but then her true love is torn away from her and it's about how she rebels. Then uh, it's your timeline. So centuries later, we are then following a woman called B, who is living in the Welsh Hills. And she has disturbing visions which are related to Edba. Um, I've read Barbara Erskine books before. Um, my absolute favourite is Lady of Hay. It was the first one I read by her. Um, she does write quite a lot in this format where it's dual timeline, there is a woman in the past and a woman in the future um, and their, their lives are interconnected in some way, um, either through a place or through uh, genealogy um, or through research. I think that's how Lady of Hay is joined. Um, but yes, I, I saw this in the bookshop and absolutely definitely had to pick it up. I haven't read a Barbara Erskine book for a long time. Um, and yeah, it just called out to me and definitely is going to work for a few of the prompts on the bingo board. And the next book I'm going to talk about is Starfell, Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale. This is book two in the Starfell series. I've been feeling a bit intimidated. It's middle grade. I shouldn't be intimidated by nine to 12 year old books. Um, but I am feeling a little bit intimidated. I read the first Starfell book last year for whatever-a-thon last year and 
I absolutely loved it. It was such a great book, all about friendship and finding yourself a little bit um, and, and starting to work out who you are at this kind of nine to 12 year old age. It's about Willow who is a witch and she only has one power and that is the ability to find lost things. Um, at the beginning of book one, it was kind of frowned upon and just thought that she was useless. Only it turns out that her power can be quite useful indeed. So in book two, she's obviously continuing on with using her power to um, be useful. There's obviously a tail that's gone missing, so she's all been forgotten. So she's going to find it and work out what it was. Um, and I'm assuming it's going to follow her friendships. Uh, this book definitely, uh, it, it, I, it covers quite a few on here. So it's definitely um, the prompt for the and of by all those kind of descriptive words. Um, so it definitely covers that. It covers continues a series. Uh, it covers S's on the cover because there are at least four or five S's on the cover of this. Um, and yeah, so I am actually looking forward to picking this one up, event finally getting to it and continuing. I have book three in the series as well. So again, that gives me a little bit of um, movement with what it matches up with on the board. Uh, so yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to picking this one up um, and again, hopefully recommending it to my nephew because I don't know that he's read the first one yet. Um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to picking that one up as well. And the final book that I'm kind of thinking of reading is The Binding by Bridget Collins. Um, again, this is shiny cover. Uh, this is a book about books. I could probably pull it into the academia theme. Um, yeah, I think I've just about um, covered all of them um, with all of the books. Um, but yes, this is about a woman who is a bookbinding apprentice. And one day when he is among the stacks of books, he finds a book that has his name in it. So, uh, but these books are all things people want to forget um, or to keep safe, but not in their own memories. Um, and he finds his name in a book. So he then goes on to find out why. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to picking this one up again. It's been on my shelves for a couple of years. I think I bought it during the uh, first lockdown in 2020 and just never got round to it. Um, and I think that the actual um, readathon is going to be the perfect opportunity for me to pick it up and get going with it. So those are all the books that I'm kind of thinking of reading that I've picked because they they either match with three prompts or um, yeah, they, they kind of like fill the bingo board. Um, like I say, I'm not kind of set on doing the bingo board, but I am. I, I just want to see how I get on with it. Um, and like I say, I might only pick two prompts per book because I've just remembered that Cersei fits host favourite as well. And I think I'm definitely putting it down for that. So yeah, I'm just kind of trying to mix it up a little bit more and see how I can get through them. Um, but yes, really, really looking forward to June. Um, I'm actually filming this on the 3rd of June, so I think it's going to be a really good reading month. It is certainly going to be fun with interacting with everybody. Um, I've recently been getting into following sprints on YouTube and taking part in sprints. Uh, so I've been having some fun with that in the evenings and, and days when we're off work. Um, and yeah, so how are you taking part in whatever a thon? If you are, please let me know. Let me know what team you're on as well, um, because I'd love to know whether you're with me or against me. Um, don't worry, you don't have to unsubscribe if you're against me. I won't hold it against you. Uh, but yes, um, I hope you all have a fun reading month in June. If you've enjoyed this video, then please don't forgive me, forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then please subscribe to the channel. And I make videos, they go up every Monday at 6.30pm UK time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.